the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is my type of vibe right here. This is this is my <laughs> kind of situation. Uh, we got Talib Kweli and the legend Mad Lib in the building. Lib, pull your mic a little closer if you don't mind. Um, Liberation 2 is out on, yes. on Luminary only. Yes. So the mastermind of this operation, if I was to guess, is Talib Kweli. Uh, us together. Okay, you both. So so well, let me ask you both then. Why, does, why decide to do this through Luminary? I'll start. Um, thank you for having us on the show. Of course. You know that you have an open, open door policy. Yes. Luminary is a podcast app website. Imagine a Netflix for podcasts. Mm -hmm. And so the podcast I do with Dave Chappelle... I found a home on Luminary. Dave Chappelle, Yasin Bay, Midnight Miracle. Mm -hmm. If you haven't listened to it, I encourage you to check it out. We have a great time. My podcast, People's Party, is also there. Now, my deal with Luminary gives us... Wait, wait, real quick, sorry. With, with People's Party, how long has it been there? People's Party has been there for like a year and a half. People's Party is on Uprocks. So but it's still on Uprocks. It's still on Uprocks. The visuals on Uprocks, the audio, if you just like want to hear the podcast... Is Luminary. Is Luminary. Got it, okay. Good business right there, Tyler. I see what you're doing. Yeah, see what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see this. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Circle in the wagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple you know streams. Saying? I know how yeah. this works. All right. And so Yasin Bey famously um, has righteous criticisms about the DSPs mm -hmm. and the business structure and the deal. And any artist who's doing this can attest to the fact that we go to the DSPs because the people that are there, not because it's fair to us. As a matter of fact, it's very unfair. As a matter of fact, a lot of us get robbed on the DSPs. Uh, is there any argument, though, to be made mm -hmm. that some artists mm -hmm. can do better, will do better with DSPs than they would have done in the days of releasing an album absolutely and it's different strokes of different folks i'm not going to say nobody should be on dsps but for a legacy artist like myself and yasin bay and madly could speak for himself for someone like me i'm not getting the same looks as some of the newer hotter younger artists so i have a catalog on dsps but i gotta scrap and fight and beg for my little 0.001 percent it's very hard to do for me personally. So for me, it's a lot better to have a lot more control, ownership, equity, and have uh, a say-so over, have the people come to me directly. It works out better for me now. Yeah. I've been getting robbed my whole career. Record deal after record deal after record deal. It doesn't matter how fair you try to make it. At the end of the day, you end up getting robbed as an artist. This deal with Luminary is the first time that we didn't get robbed. So being that we didn't get robbed, being that we're in the black, being that this is good business, and these are just licensing deals, in a, a year or so, a few months, you might see some of this stuff on vinyl or DSPs. I can't speak for Blackstar, but some of this stuff, Liberation's definitely going to be on vinyl, definitely going to be on DSPs at some point. But allow us to get our money first, right. allow us to have ownership first. And it's funny because on Luminary, you do have Midnight Miracle, which is amazing. It's an amazing piece of art. You have People's Party, if I do say so myself, amazing piece of art. You got the Black Star album, No Fear of Time, produced by Madlib, an amazing piece of art. You got the uh, Liberation 2. You got... Uh, Trevor Noah, you got Russell Brand, you got Roxanne Gay. You, so you got people complaining about getting more for their money. You get right. so much. And what is the monthly on Luminary again? I think it's five dollars or something like that. Uh, oh, it's, it's, that's pretty low key. Yeah, so, and as, you could get a seven day free trial. And by the way, there's way more podcasts than that too. Um, <laughs> no, I know their business model well. I talked to them before w w in the early stages of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, there, It's it's a v obviously as someone who does audio for a living, mm -hmm. I love anyone who's finding ways to make proper money for people doing audio. Yeah, Everyone's satisfied it. to give stuff away right now. That's kind of part of the podcast where it's like, ah, we just yeah. do it. And that's what people <laughs> complain about the paywall, but you'll you'll buy some some cannabis or you buy some Jordans or you buy a smartphone to listen to the music on. You know what I'm saying? Our music comes at a premium. If you want to hear it, this is the way you hear it. And and Madlib, do you do you see things generally the yeah, same way? What are your thoughts? Everything he said is true. You know, we get, get a little closer. We get money, you know what I mean? <laughs> we get money. Instead of getting, instead of getting robbed, you know what I mean? And and that must be cool for you too, because you've always put out music in different ways. You've had a lot of different ways of doing it. Obviously, yeah. Stones Throw for a long time, and then like Random Project here. Like it's almost sometimes hard to follow the Mad Lib music that comes out because it yeah. it feels like it can hit you out of different places. It's how it's supposed to be? Yeah, know? that yeah. is. Well, that's the very Mad Lib thing. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe. Here's my question for you, Talib. How's how's Mad Lib's availability been? Is he available? Because I, I I I always tease that Mad Lib's like a ghost. You know, I met him one time years ago. Yeah. Someone said Mad Lib's going to be at this bar in L.A. if you want to give him your record. Yeah. He just sidled up to him like, hey, handed him his, our record. 
he vanished. I swear to God, I turned around, he was gone. He's got a Rick Rubin essence to him. He's just like here and, and there. Yeah, I think Mad Lib goes on vibes and is very organic. And it's like this. It's like this. I've known, oh, we've known each other for years. Yeah. Sometimes I've had his number. Sometimes I haven't had his number. I only have his um his Apple his his Apple text thing. That's my yeah. only way. Yeah, See, you giving uh, away too much information. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, three four seven eight two six. <laughs> but I will say this: when it's time to pull up, it's time to pull up. And I have people in my life who I know and love that I would kill and die for that probably couldn't reach me on the phone right now. Right. So well, that's a really that's really interesting so to you. say. Yeah. So as so does everybody in this room. And then I have other people who are like that to me, and I get annoyed. And you get yeah, annoyed, same. right? Isn't that bullshit? It is. Bullshit. We get sad. We get annoyed when people <laughs> yeah. won't hit us. And meanwhile, you've been hitting so and so to try to get something from them. You you need something. Meanwhile, someone else is hitting you to do the same thing. You're like fuck off. Right. I'm trying to get this with someone else. Right. And they're seeing you on Instagram, and they're trying right. to DM you. And you're like, <laughs> I don't have time to see that. Yo, we're we're whack. <laughs> but uh, so is what about Liberation Two? Is similar to the original, which is how many years ago now? 15 years ago? 19, um, 2000, no, 2006. Wow, out. more than 15 yeah. years ago. I can't believe uh, that, that's great. 16 I years ago. Yo, I consider liberation to be like recent. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That's how fast. That means you're getting old. That's, you're that's how you time know. Time is flying. Time, yo, it's. Time is flying. So cool. I feel like no more parties in LA just came out. Yeah. Would I'm, you say, money about seconds turn to years in your new verse? Yeah, see, so you asked about what's similar on it. 16 years ago, my son Imani, who's in his 20s now, a time flies, so I don't even know exactly how old he is, but he's somewhere in his 20s. <laughs> do, you, do, you, you know, do you know his exact age or no? I don't. I know he's born in 96. <laughs> born in 96, right? Yeah, I'm bad at math. <laughs> Wait, how many kids you got, Talib? Three. You know, that's not that hard to get the three dates. <laughs> Listen, like, I don't care about birthdays. I'm not, really I'm not, not a birthday, birthday guy. guy. That's for like women and party promoters. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you start to say about that sometimes. Sipe's the exact opposite. The only thing he cares about is birthdays. Doesn't care about holidays. Doesn't care about anything else. Only <laughs> celebrates people's birthdays. Yeah, I'm like Don Draper. Yeah. You're you're 20 something years old. It's time to get over birthdays. <laughs> I, I forgot about that bar That's from my Don Draper. Bar. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Amani 16 years ago was a child. We have a record called Happy Home where Amani and Diani are singing out of tune, but like little kids, yeah. on the record 16 years ago on one of my favorite songs I've ever done, Happy Home, and I'm talking about my family history. 16 years later, both Amani and Diani are barring me out on the liberation. Both Amani and Diani perform me on Jimmy Fallon, and I got to say, you got to respect the Greens. Yeah, yo, that is amazing. <laughs> so, Mad Lib, any, anything else that you're allowed to share with us that you're that you're cooking up these days? Uh -oh. I'm working on an album with Laurel Drew. Wow. Hold on now. There's a couple a full... albums with Planet Asia. Wow. And, um, you know, we're going to be doing more uh, stuff. Yeah. And, you know, beat records. Still trying to do that record with you also. I mean, but... I'm starting over my, you know, record thing because I'm, you know, I'm starting, I'm doing it all by myself now, you know. What do you mean? I'm, <laughs> I cut everybody off. You know? Oh, so it's just everybody's everything's gone, a, a you yeah. operation. Yeah, yeah. All right. No, Mad Lib's great. Uh, Mad Lib is like such a dream person to get a record from. Yeah. And yet, like, he's, we haven't gotten it done yet. I wanted to get him on my last album. It didn't happen. But the fact that he's so responsive and remembers it, just, he, I don't think he even realizes, like, there are certain people of a certain echelon, if they just respond to what you're saying, mm -hmm. you're like, wow, this is yeah. a really cool dude. Because there are people who ain't nowhere near Mad Lib who don't even respond. You know, who right. like who just completely roast you. I'm sure you you know the process of trying to get features. Yeah. It can be a really. I didn't understand it until I worked on my my album. I've heard you talk about this a lot. I, oh, well, I talked about it with you, didn't I? <laughs> this is like a thing for you with the, like getting well, no, features. No, we, we talked about it. I think I think we talked about it when with, uh, with Syph at some point. Yeah, maybe on on one. Oh, I think we did it on one app, yeah. and I was talking about getting features. So yeah. it only comes up when it's like related to people who I tried. For right, right, or right. got or didn't get, right, right. but it just made me appreciate people in such a artist in such a different way. I mean, and granted, you guys are different. Like, obviously, and I, I say this not to be self deprecating. Mm -hmm. I say it honestly. When another artist hears from an artist, mm -hmm. getting a feature is a different thing than a, a radio DJ who's put, putting together an album. I get that. Yeah, but I've still heard it from other artists too. Like, yo, you have no idea. Sometimes trying to finish out an album is just brutal. Right. Yeah, I think you know, being a what were you about to say? Oh. Oh, no, no. I think being an artist, it's, it goes back to the conversation about how O could be re reclusive and about when you answer your phone and when you don't. Like, when when I'm not answering my phone, it's not because I don't love you. It's because 
to to be to do what I do requires this amount of attention and this amount of focus. And if I'm if I'm in studio mode or in show mode or trying to write a rhyme, I can't start even open up my energy to start to respond to other people. And I think being an artist requires a level of focus sometimes. So let's say I'm an artist that respects a Rosenberg and I got Rosenberg, the radio guy, trying to get a feature for me. It's like, I see that text, but I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I can't, I, I can't focus on that. I'm gonna get to that because I respect Right, right, right. I re I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get mm -hmm. to it, but I gotta focus on what I'm focusing on. And then, and then, that just spirals out of control. Right. And then you're, now you got 30 of them. Then you got 30 of them. <laughs> and you still haven't got the rhyme. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. And so I think to, to O's credit, I've learned from him, sometimes you just got to shut down. Sometimes right. you just got to like not deal with any of it and say, well, everybody got to wait because this is what feeds the family and this is what feeds my soul. And something you said recently, I don't do this for y'all. If y'all like it, thank you. I, I appreciate that. But I do it for my own mental health. And I think that's very important. Very true. Uh, I want to ask you both about um, Doom because I haven't talked to either of you ab about it since he passed. Um, I'll start with you, Talib. How, how did you – he's just such a – for people like us who love the kind of hip-hop we love, mm -hmm. um, beyond even having a personal relationship, he's just so important. Yeah. Um, how did you process that that loss? It was a tough one, of course, because – I'll just say that the way that Doom, the way we found out about Doom's loss was classic Doom. Oh my God. Psh, it was almost it like he planned it out. Did you see that Atlanta episode that was based on that situation? I don't, was it from the last season? It was from the last. I'm halfway through the last season. I've been taking it very okay, slow. Uh, shout out to Donald Glover. He did an episode on Atlanta in which some underground rapper who's obscure and reclusive passes away and nobody knows because the family didn't tell nobody. But the rapper ended up leaving his clues on an album for a scavenger hunt. And at the end of the scavenger hunt, I'm sorry if y'all haven't seen it, but at the end of the scavenger hunt, he ends up getting to the rapper's funeral. But the funeral was something that lasted like he, he, it was this whole elaborate thing. Wow! And, and I'm like, what if, what if that's what Doom was doing? I know. You know what I'm saying? The two, the two people who passed when I thought they may be, it may be fake. Mm -hmm. The two times I, I ever thought eh, was Doom mm -hmm. and Sean P. Right. For so Sean Price, for some reason, the way his brain operated, right. when I, I, I and I'd been so in touch with him that when he died, I was like, nah, this is like some weird Twitter yeah, it hoax. It was crazy because his it was his album was about to come out. Right. His album came out what a month after he passed away, and then you know he used to make fun of me like I'm a better rapper than you, and then on the album he raps about me on the album, wow. and I got to hear it. At, I, I never had a chance to say thank you to him for this, you know. But I, I knew Doom, you know, I knew the family wouldn't be, you know, telling us no fibs. I knew that. But it was just strange that it was so that if you found out it was a few months earlier. That's yeah. what made it like a weird. What was it like for I you, man? Everybody else found out. Really? You know I mean? Yeah, nobody called me or nothing. I thought it was a joke for a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? But we were in contact like about a month earlier than that. So I thought. I was and gonna you see, didn't have any indication. I was see him again. No, right. no, we're about to work on finish that all album and everything. How many? How many? Um, how many joints do you guys have? Uh, like ten. Ten joints. Can you imagine what's going on in this guy's hard drives? By the way. Yeah, I no, can't I even. Can't. No, I can't. I can't even <laughs> fathom what this guy. There are probably classics this dude has lost. That like he just had a classic that was there. Oh yeah, it yeah. was in the wrong that folder. Happens. That happens. And then you find it. You're yeah, like, yeah. Oh. but um. So you guys had always stayed in touch since yeah, the Bad yeah, Villain yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Where do you? My, my where, partner's gone. That's, you know, that's it. Like, where do you put in terms of the important stuff you've worked on album wise in your career? Where do you? Where does the Mad Villain sit? I'd have to imagine it's very near the top. Oh uh, yeah, the second one is it's just not complete. You know what I mean? It's like. It's more like a demo to me, you know what I mean? Because we didn't we didn't piece it together or anything, and some of them, you know, he, he sounded like he's just did a one take and that's it, you know what I mean? Like, so that's a tough process then trying yeah, to figure out how I'm, you turn I'm that. Gonna, into, I'm gonna finish it. You yeah, are gonna do it yeah, though. Yeah. I gotta change a lot of the beats because some of the beats were used also, you know. Oh right, right. After right. the beats been, been when used did it start? Like, when did the recording process start for uh, Matt Villainy too? Right after Mad Villain, but he only did like a song, you know, a couple songs a year maybe. You know what I mean? Man, he's he's truly one. We have lost. We've had some tough losses in this last few years, bro. We really have, and it goes beyond hip hop because we're all men of a certain age. We got to take care of ourselves. We got to take care of each other. We got to look out for each other. Check in on each other's mental health, uh, physical health, well being, um, and and provide great examples for each other. Um, you know, we we are we're we're men of a certain age, but we're also too young to be dying. Like Correct. This. Yeah. Correct. Um, do you ever see what I posted it? Uh, sometime after he passed, did you see the the video of you and Mac Miller at South by Southwest? At South by Southwest? It's it's just me. I had a flip cam out on the street, 
and you imagine it's Baby Mac. It's like he's seventeen. You know what I mean? Like the, I saw one that you posted with Baby Mac and, and Meek. Uh, and Meek. It's like that same era. I saw that one. Um, Mac is on Liberation too. Yeah, I got a whole album with Mac. You have a that's a known thing. Yeah. This is has this been spoken about? And I just I, missed I just it. Spoke to the family. We're working on that. Yeah, and I, a Mac Lib is that is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah. I mean, um, it's up to the family. Yeah, how they want. Oh. Yeah, I, I I gotta call Clancy. I gotta call yeah. Clancy right in the second. And because uh, Mac Miller was working on Mad Lib tracks, is how I ended up getting a Mac uh, Mac, Mac Miller feature on my album. Because it was already he's already working on these same beats, and we we had actually picked the same beat. Mm -hmm. So before he passed away, me and him had rapped to the same beat. And you guys have been cool forever, right? Like yeah, cool. like yeah. Mac Miller, man. Rest in peace to Mac Miller. Such a beautiful soul. He was, yeah, man. I've this is so this is our my third record with him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, wow. Whew, that's yeah. crazy. You also on this new album crazy. is, is Q-Tip is on it, Wild Child is on it, Rock Marciano, West Side Gun, Guapale, Sam Kuti, Casper Neoves. Quasimodo? No Quasimodo. <laughs> right. Roy Ayers is on it. Oh, I'll take a Roy Ayers. Yeah, I'll take, take a Roy Ayers. Ayers. Yo, that's a crazy <laughs> list of features. It is. Pink Seafood's on it. We go from Pink Seafood to Roy Ayers. Bruh. All right. <laughs> Guys, uh, Liberation <laughs> 2 on Luminary. Yes. Um, Luminarypodcast.com if you're on your laptop. Luminary app if you're on your phone. Um, I appreciate you guys coming. Thank you for having the us. The fact that I've had Mad Lib here not once but twice, it makes me feel like a... An, you. A, an, you official... You've been you. sampled by Mad Lib. Hey, and I've been sampled. An an unreleased sample. This and is, you might get a Mad Lib feature on your next yeah, record. What, what are you I'm doing out here, Roland? I'm doing something right. And by the way, I was sure, people don't know how deep you go. I was showing my team... Throw some cheese on it and bowl bowling the other day. Why? Just to let Why? them know what, 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 Rosenberg with hair had them bars. Yo, you just oh, okay. <laughs> by the way, word. my man just told me how busy he is that sometimes he just can't answer the phone with people he loves. And then he tells me he showed his team my bowling video. <laughs> bowling. <laughs> that was before. That's how that's how I ended up getting the job. That's how you got that job. Got I was job. watching those videos and I was like, oh shit, they hired the guy from the cheese on it video. <laughs> Yo, you know the most fucked up thing too? The most fucked up thing about the cheese video is it was like my first jump off on YouTube in the early days of YouTube. And then he was kill killing YouTube. I was killing YouTube. And then another kid made like a terrible uh, throw some cheese on it cartoon video that was ass. Mm -hmm. And it ended up sucking a lot of my views. Wow. And it's hard to explain, but it was wow. it was early days YouTube shit. And this is when this is when if you got a million views, you were like fucking Justin Bieber. Which is why when Mac Miller first called me, that was a thing. And I had never heard of him. He called me, he said, I got your number for someone, I'm Mac Miller. All right, I'm Googling him as I'm talking. I'm only I'm Googling him in one of his videos, maybe Nike on my feet or Donald Trump, one of those videos said one million views. You were like, oh, oh shit, I, I better pay attention to this. this call. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I looked the other day, uh, fucking Harry Styles or someone. Yeah, I think it was Harry Styles. We, we do this thing called Whiteish Wednesday. We play Whiteish. White Whiteish. Yeah. Y'all do that for real here? Yeah, every okay. Wednesday. And it's, <laughs> I haven't been up here in a long time. It's been a while. No, no. We've been doing it for like a year. We've been doing it for like a year. It's Wednesday mornings at eight o'clock. Okay. And it's just a it's just a game we play about sort of cultural differences between people. Mainly, mainly the shit that Shawnee knows and doesn't know and how funny <laughs> it is. Right. Like you would know every record played, 100 percent All the white records? Yes. Everyone. We're not going, we're not playing deep cuts. You guys right. will both know every single record. I don't record. know. I haven't I'm, I'm out the loop a lot of these days. No, the new ones you might not. I okay, don't know yeah, some of the new old, ones. Older ones. But like oh, yeah. when I when I play Billy Joel records, oh, yeah, 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 I'm talking about easy shit for the most part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we would we were doing like rock. I forget what we did this week, but I was like, let me look up Harry Styles. I know he's got a, a smash. And I play one of his records, Watermelon, the Watermelon Joint, or whatever it's called. Songs. You know it. It's a ubiquitous song, but I, I didn't know. I promise you, it. I don't know it. All right, really? <laughs> I've been too busy working on Liberation oh, too. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about it. I don't care about it that much. But the shit on Spotify said over 2 billion listens. Mm. Yeah. Like the, the standards today are just yeah, wild. Yeah, our shit different. is on Luminary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I said Luminary. Go to Luminary. So get uh, Liberation 2 on Luminary, and uh, you guys have an open-door policy whenever you want to come up. No we doubt. Thank you so Good much. to see you, Rob. Love, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you.